New developments out of Cuba and Washington are making talks of a revived U.S.-Cuba relationship seem like a real possibility. We have a special guest, and we begin first with a live report from Mary Murray live in Havana. Hi, Mary. Hey, hola, Erin. <laughs> You know, I've only been back on the ground here for about uh, three hours. Uh, I was in the States doing some work. But uh, the Obama's changes are the only thing people here are talking about. And on the surface, first look, it's the average Cuban, I think, who are going to benefit first from those changes. Family remittances, that's the most important thing that people are hearing about these changes. Um, the Cuban uh, economy depends on those remittances to function. About $600 million to $1 billion a year is generated from family remittances. And local economists say now that Obama, President Obama, has lifted the cap, removed the cap, and that people can send more than $300 a quarter, um, millions more are expected to pour in. People are hoping that those, that revenue that actually goes to ease shortages for the Cuban family will also help lower prices here in Cuba in government stores where uh, prices are pretty steep. More people with more money buying more goods should have that kind of an impact. Um, on the bigger picture, the Cuban government welcomes any move that lessens tensions with the United States. Cuba has said for years that it pays a price around the world for its bad diplomatic relations with Washington, that suppliers charge them more at those times of heightened tension. But you can also say that the reverse is true, that the less tension between Washington and Havana over the years, um, the more secure investors from third countries feel doing business here. Um, the bottom line, though, is that the Cubans are hoping for more. They want full trade relations with the United States. Um, we're not there yet, and it looks like it's going to be quite a while before we get there. And no one, though, here expects that these changes will be enough to transform the Cuban economy. Erin? All right. Well, thanks very much to you, Mary. Buenos tardes, and uh, stay safe down there. It must be fascinating. Thank you. All right. Since the revolution, American business has been shut out of Cuba and foreign investment has been rather limited. But for those who have made it in, it has been an island of profit, say some. If American companies actually entered the picture, what would it mean? Well, for American profits and capitalism, that threatened state of being around the world right now. Walter Barakoff is one of the few foreigners who have made a fortune in Cuba, and he joins us now uh, from Vancouver. Walter, uh, Wally, thanks so much for being with us. We appreciate it. Thank you, Aaron. And uh, we, we, were, we were teasing you and our, our friend Donald Trump, saying you were the, the Donald Trump of, of Cuba. And, and we said that because you have gone into real estate there in a major way. And a lot of Americans may not realize if you're not American, Cuba has long been a vacation destination. Yes, that's true, Aaron. Uh, about 40 percent of all the tourists that arrive in Cuba today are Canadian. 40% are Canadian. And, and when you say, yes. I, I was looking through some of the presentations here, and I did get a bit of a chuckle here. Uh, one of the big sells to get into Cuba is, is this page with a big picture of none other than Barack Obama as the uh, emissary. But uh, an island of profit and um, something saying that over 6 million Americans would travel to Cuba in the first year alone. Uh, if relations were normalized between the U.S. And, and Cuba. That's a Price Waterhouse Cooper's number. What does that mean, dollars and cents, for you? Well, dollars and cents. Today, uh, Aaron, there's about 2 million tourists that come to Cuba. Uh, triple that. And uh, the income from that will probably triple or quadruple. What that means for everybody is that uh, more services and goods will be required. And, of course, a huge opportunity for those of us who are there, there, there now to service that. And you're the demand. largest uh, non-Cuban landowner, right? Of beach, et cetera? We are one of, uh, we are one of the uh, large uh, landowners in Cuba. Um, we have been there for 17 years. Uh, we've operated there uh, on many levels and in many sectors of the economy. Uh, land and, and development is certainly one of our largest uh, interests. Uh, we're a public company that trades in Toronto, so we've been funded by Canadian uh, investors and European investors and continue to expand our Cuban base 
uh, going forward. And now, with this new policy changes, we see a huge opportunity. And do American companies have a chance? I mean, I know when you're talking about Leisure Canada and, and your, your uh, land holding, you're saying all of your properties are on 75-year leases. Those seem like pretty incredible terms and doubtful that those would persist uh, if capitalism really, you know, if it did take hold and American companies were allowed in. You've got an advantage, don't you? We certainly have an advantage. Uh, we have several advantages. One of the most important advantages is that we are dealing in properties where, which are, have no U.S. claims on them. It's very important. Uh, we're not the only ones that see the value and beauty in Cuba. Many people came before us and saw the same thing and have since claimed on them. Uh, and these are people who had left Cuba which, and now are making claims on land that's there? That's correct. Oh, okay. okay. So then obviously that's legally correct. that could be threatened, but you don't have that land? No. No, we did our investigations and uh, I've done our homework and to make sure that none of our lands are claimed. And so if you were just to explain to someone in a nutshell, I mean, so many people think of Cuba and they think of oh, maybe they're curious because of the whole Castro link or maybe they just think it's, a, you know, sort of backwards or a glimpse back to the 1950s. But if there was something that would just capture for people, how much money is at stake here, how significant it is, what's that number for you? <sighs> Well, it's hard to say. Uh, we, we would expect that our portfolio, portfolio that we presently have, uh, just on our real estate side, um, in the next cycle will be worth in excess of a billion dollars. Um, for those that come behind us uh, and, and with us, we have several uh, companies now uh, inquiring about being our partners and moving forward. Um, that will expand. We see other opportunities. We've operated in several sectors of the Cuban economy and then continue to uh, look at other sectors. We'll continue to expand. Hard, difficult to put a number on it, uh, Aaron, but compare it to the boom. If you had a chance to buy southern uh, Florida property at 1950 prices today, you can, uh, you can calculate what that could be worth today. All right. Well, thank you very much, Wally. Appreciate your time.